What's up guys? It's me, Sir Ernest, and today we're going to solve problem 7.11 of Griffith's 4th edition. The problem reads, A square loop is cut of a thick sheet of aluminum. Then it is placed so that the top portion is in, an, is in a uniform magnetic field B and is allowed to fall under gravity, as shown in this figure. Okay, in the diagram, the shading indicates a field region, just like here, the yellow region. And the magnetic field there points into the page. So find the magnetic field. If the magnetic field is 1 tesla, find the terminal velocity of the loop. Find the velocity of the loop as a function of time. And... How long does it take in seconds to reach 90% of the terminal velocity? Okay? So first, let's start with calculating the terminal velocity. Okay? But this time, we're not going to use any values here. We're just going to give you the expression. And for your problem set, you're going to calculate the actual terminal velocity given a set of constants related to the thick aluminum sheets. Okay? So, let's start. So, in this case, uh, this is your aluminum square loop. Okay? And it is under the influence of gravity. So, this is the uh, gravitational force. And, and this is equal to negative mg y hat. So, if we set this as our y, in this direction will be our x direction. Okay? So, uh, because of this loop moving downward, and due to the magnetic field that is directed into the page within this region, okay, so by Lenz law, because there is a uh, out of the page uh, out of the page uh, change in magnetic field by Lenz law so that means the change in the magnetic field will create a current that is counterclockwise okay so that's by right hand rule so by Lenz law the current that will produce or that will be produced in this loop will counter that direction or counter that direction so that means the current in this loop will be in this direction so this would be your i okay so if this is your current the current in this top loop will be directed to the right so as a consequence by uh, by your right-hand rule, the force will be directed upward. So, this is the magnetic force due to this loop. Okay? And for this region, the, ele the magnetic, the electric, uh, the current, uh, the electric current will be upward. So, the magnetic force will be in this direction. And in this side, this electric, the electric current will be downward here. So the direction would be to the right. Because of the fact that these two magnetic forces on these two sides of the square loop are equal in magnitude but opposite in the direction. So that means these two forces will just cancel each other. So, the only force that will uh, dictate or that will have an influence, direct influence or net influence on this loop will be the gravitational force that is directed downward and the magnetic force that is directed upward. Okay? And then we're going to use uh, Newton's laws to calculate the magnetic at uh, the terminal velocity in the loop. Okay? So, let's start with calculating the uh, magnetic uh, force. 
So the magnetic force here will be equal to I times L. Okay. So let's call this um, let's call this uh, this one the length of this loop the side of this loop to be H okay so let's call this H and let's call this H okay so that's uh, I H vector cross B so this is now equal to H would be x hat b would be z hat so x y uh, negative z hat so the direction of f b would be j hat so this is i h b j hat and this opposes the gravitational potential and the question is right now is what is the current what is the induced current as this loop falls down so the induced current can now be expressed in terms of uh, the electro-induced EMF E and that is equal to by our previous example that is equal to uh, V B H where V is the velocity of your loop downward. And by Ohm's law, this is equal to IR. So therefore, the induced current will now be equal to BH over R times V. And substituting this to our equation here, therefore, the magnetic force will now be equal to I is BHV over R times h times b so this is b squared h squared over r v okay so she will notice that uh, and then this is j hat so she will notice that f b is a function of v now by newton's laws sum of forces acting along y on your loop will be equal to fb minus fg or plus if you want this to be in vector uh, vector notation that will be plus so this will be b squared h squared over rv minus mg is equal to minus m derivative of v with respect to time so in this case the acceleration along y is downward because the direction of the motion is downward and it started from a lower velocity okay so it's allowed to fall due to gravity so by definition the initial velocity of this loop is zero. So therefore, as the part as the loop goes down, the increasing velocity is also downward. Therefore, the acceleration is downward. Okay. So let's solve this equation. So we now have uh, mg minus b squared h squared over r times b equals m derivative of v with respect to time so simplifying this we now have g minus let's say uh, alpha v and this is equal to derivative of v with respect to time so here we define alpha to be beta uh, b squared h squared over 
MR. Okay. So, when uh, when you want to calculate the terminal velocity, so the terminal velocity is achieved if the acceleration of the particle is zero. So that means the oh, approach is zero. So that means the magnetic field and the gravitational field or the sorry the magnetic force on the loop and the gravity and the weight of the loop approaches equilibrium. So in that case the acceleration should also approach zero. So if this is the case, therefore alpha V should be equal to G. And this is your terminal velocity. So this gives us that the terminal velocity be equal to G over alpha. Or substituting this, we now have um, mg r over bh h squared uh, b squared h squared okay so this is the terminal velocity of this loop okay so in your problem set later I will give you some values uh, to determine the Accelerate the this terminal velocity. So I will give you the mass of the particle uh, from the mass density of the aluminum, the cross section of the aluminum with side L, etc. Okay. So that's all for now. So in the next video, we're going to find uh, the time it takes in seconds to reach 90% of the terminal velocity. Okay, so for now, I hope you learned something today and I'll see you guys in the continuation of this problem. Bye-bye.